Oh, good afternoon, boys and girls. How are you? I missed ya. Good to have you back today. Today is our last lesson in our series. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Yes, boys and girls. Today, we're going to hear another crazy story from God's Word. And so, let's start out with a word of prayer. God, help us, Lord, as we come before you. Help us to remember to give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you're going to do. We love you and praise you. Bless this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's get right into Skittles and see what our what's up is. What's up? 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 should go to him no matter what. Well, let's see what Noah Lott has to say today. I know it sounds crazy, but in one acre of land, there can be over one million earthworms. I know it sounds crazy, but the largest earthworm ever found was in South Africa, and it measured over 22 feet long. I know it sounds crazy, but instead of having one heart like most animals, an earthworm has five. I know it sounds crazy, but earthworms can breathe through their skin. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Very, very true. You ready to hear something even crazier today on... I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Today... Our Bible story is about worms. Worms! Also known to scientists as lumbricina, or wigglers, or night crawlers, or beaver tails, or mud spaghetti. Mud spaghetti? Okay, okay. I made that last one up. Let me explain. King Herod gave a great speech one day. The people that heard him started applauding and cheering them. They said, these are the words from a God, not from a man. In fact, they thought that King Herod was so smart, he must be God. You ever know someone who is the best at something? It's the girl who never messes up at a dance recital. It's the boy who always wins the science fair, or that kid who always gets picked first for sports and always scores the winning run. And then the people come and they give them high fives and they tell them about how awesome they are and how they are the best. Isn't it so annoying when that person actually believes they are the best? The best at everything? Oh, that's definitely me. <laughs> Yes, I'm definitely the best. I can jump the highest, run the fastest. I even outran a horse using only one foot. <laughs> I can arm wrestle a grizzly bear while playing a flute. I won 27 gold medals at the last Olympics just for showing up. <laughs> the president has my number on speed dial. My armpits do not create any...
So boys and girls, today we're going to look in God's Word in the book of Acts, and this story is in chapter 12 of the book of Acts, and it starts at verse 20. At verse 20. Now, it tells us that, again, the Israelites, we're talking about them, they were under the authority of King Herod. Now, it's not the same King Herod that tried to have Jesus killed, okay? This is a different King Herod. And so King Herod was used to giving speeches, you know, and taking care of the Israelites. And so one day he gave all this wonderful speech. He was sitting on his throne giving the speech to the people. And he gave such an amazing speech that the people of Israel started to get excited. And they said, oh, this is the voice of, of, of God, not a man. Hmm. Well, boys and girls, King Herod let all of their words go to his head. And instead of believing that God was the one that gave him all this wisdom and all this nice speech, his head started getting bigger and bigger, meaning that he was getting very prideful. And he thought, oh, I am the best. I am a good king. I am a god. Hmm. Well, boys and girls, you know what happened? Yep. He thought, I really must be something. Well, what he should have been saying was, no way, people, it's not me. It's God, the only true God that has given me the ability to do this. But he didn't. And so God sent an angel. And when the angel got there, the angel struck him dead. And boys and girls, he was eaten by worms. Ew! He really was, boys and girls. He became just bones because the worms ate him. Oh! And that's what should have happened. Boys and girls, if only Herod had handled that a different way. If only he had given God the glory instead of him taking the glory, believing all the things that people said about him. Now, it may have been true that, yes, he did say some nice things, but he needed to say, praise God. He's the one that gives me the strength. He's the one that gives me the words to say. Then he may have lived. I hope the people watching learned a lesson from his mistakes well, today you're going to learn another big lesson about how to handle things like that really well. King Herod gave us the wrong example, but in just a little bit, you're going to learn a different example from the Bible. It's an example of how to handle it right, the right way to handle success. <laughs> Keeper. <laughs> Did you know that the most amount of jelly beans to be stuck up someone's nose is 15 billion? <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> well, of course, it was an elephant's nose. <laughs> well, anyway, now it's time for today's power verse. <laughs> I will praise you forever, O oh God, for what you have done. Psalms 52, 9. <laughs> that was a great power verse. Now, I want you to say it with me. I want the girls to stand up and say the power verse with me, Guinea. We're going to say it on three. One, two, three. I will praise you forever, O oh God, for what you have done. Psalm 52, 9. That was a great power verse, girls. You can have a seat. Okay, now I want the boys to say the power verse with me. Boys, stand up. Say the power verse with me on three. One, two, three. I will praise you forever, O oh God, for what you have done. Psalms 52, 9. Great job. You can have a seat. 
All right, boys and girls, today we're learning about how God is the reason for all the success in our lives, no matter what. We must remember to give God the glory for everything good that happens in our lives. <laughs> and now that we know that, boys and girls, I want you all to stand up and say the power verse together with me, Guinea, <laughs> on three. One, two, three. I will I praise, praise you forever, forever, O God, for what, what you have done. done. Psalm, Psalm 52, 9. 9. What a great job you did today, everyone. Have a seat. Well, I've got some more record keeping to do, so ta-ta. Keep your eyes crossed and your noses clean. Bye-bye. <laughs> Boys and girls, so our verse today is Psalm 52, verse 9. I will praise you forever, O God, for what you have done. Psalm 52, verse 9. Boys and girls, for what he has done in our lives, we need to give him praise. Today we learned about King Herod and how he handled success badly in his life. He made that amazing speech and then everyone started telling him that he must be a god. Sometimes you can do something great and other people begin to sing your praises. And they begin to talk about how amazing you are. Well, here are several things you must do when you experience success. Remember, King Herod and the worms, wrong so what's something that you must do? Number one, don't believe everything you hear. You know, boys and girls, if you're successful, you won't, you won't have to look hard to find someone to tell you how wonderful you are. Before long, you find yourself believing it. I'm the best singer anyone has ever heard. Or I did make all this success on my own. Or I'm the smartest person around. I'm the best athlete. Yes, they wouldn't win without me. You know, they are right. I am the prettiest girl in the room. You people sure are lucky to be able to spend time with me. Oh, boys and girls, if you want to handle success in the completely wrong way, go ahead and believe everything you hear. Accept the compliments and flattery of people. That's what Herod did and it didn't turn out too good for him. So don't believe everything you hear. And also you need to remember that every good gift comes from God. Do you remember who the apostle Paul was? Remember he was Saul, he was killing all those people and then God struck him down and with lightning and he saw a bright light and then he said, who are you, Lord? And then he believed in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And he started telling other people about Jesus. Well, you know, boys and girls, the same thing happened to him that happened to Herod. In Acts 14, we're going to go here. In Acts 14, Paul used the power of God to heal a man who was lame and couldn't walk. He told the man, stand up and walk. When the man got up and walked, the people started yelling. Oh, oh, that Paul must be some kind of God. But Paul handled his success differently. He didn't say, yes, I'm the one that can heal people. Absolutely not. He told the people, why are you doing this? We are only men, human like you. I am bringing you the good news of God who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. Do you see what Paul is saying? He is remembering that God is the one that gave him the strength. God is the one that made everything in people. God is the one that Paul was having success because God is the one that made it happen. We have to remember, boys and girls, that our talents, our abilities, our strength, our successes, they're all gifts from God. And without him, we could do nothing, absolutely nothing. So 
when you are successful in whatever you do, remember, instead of taking the credit, give the glory to God. Give God the glory. Never forget to give God the glory. Why? Because he deserves it. He alone is our source and strength and power. He is the source of the glory. He's the source of the joy. He is the source of the strength. When you succeed, instead of being puffed up, thinking so good of yourself, be humble and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be able to do whatever it is that you can do. Boys and girls, what about you? What do you think you could do? Are you going to be like King Herod and get eaten up by worms? Or are you going to be like Paul and give God the glory? Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, that you have created each one of us, that you love us, and that you just desire us to worship and serve you. I pray for these boys and girls. I pray, Lord, that they would remember to give you the glory for all the success in their lives. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We ask your blessing upon each one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, it's been great. Next week, Miss Naomi will be back. You take care and remember, God loves you and so do I. Bye guys. Take care.